Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, North Light Images, and in this video I'm going to look at some uses of shift lenses. Now, these include tilt shift lenses, but I'm just looking at aspects of the use of shift. In particular, why you might choose different focal lengths of shift lens. Now, I've got quite a variety of lenses here that I've used, and I'll show some examples here and show them on the video. And they go from a TSC, Canon TSC 17mm shift lens, 24mm lens, and then an assortment of old Mamaya M645 lenses uh, used with a tilt shift adapter. There's a 35mm, there's a 55mm, and there's an 80mm. And just because I wanted a bit more variety, I've got uh, a medium format two times teleconverter. So that'll double up my focal length if I need to be, just to give me a range of focal lengths because you don't get zoom tilt shift lenses. Um, well, I've never seen one and I don't know of one that's ever been made. Uh, it's not impossible to do, but um, I can't imagine uh, that such a thing would be remotely cheap to get. Anyway, I'll stop. I'm gonna use a scene that I've used for a lot of testing. This is over at De Montfort University, not far away from here. And this particular shot here is taken at 160 millimeters. Now I'm gonna show differences in positioning and differences in focal length so that you get the idea. Now, if you've experimented with lenses at different focal lengths, you should be familiar with uh, how focal length changes the views of things. However, I found when I'm doing teaching work that a lot of people, they get a zoom lens and they don't really use it as a set of lenses. They use it as a controlled cropping tool. So you pick where you want the view and then you use the zoom to crop as much as you want or zoom in, magnify, because that's all it really is. So here's 160 millimeters. Uh, as you can see, uh, not much detail of the building behind, well, rather too much detail of it, if you want to see what the building is. Um, it's a distance away. It also gives that illusory compression effect that you get with longer lenses. Um, it's not real. It's just a cropping effect and a viewing angle effect. So if I just move down, that's 160. So that's the 80 with a times two teleconverter. If I move down to the next one, we get 110 millimeters. This is the 55 with the two times teleconverter. As you can see, we can now see much more clearly the building behind us. Uh, depth of field is quite shallow at this length and uh, this one needed a bit of sharpening. These lenses, when used with teleconverters, are not always the best of quality. These are not bad, but um, if you want 110 millimeter, you're probably best getting something like the Canon TSC 90 or the, uh, the, the Nikon is doing 85, or there's a Canon 135 millimeter, which I have tested, which is an excellent lens, but far too expensive just for me to buy on a whim. So there's 110 millimeters. And I'll now go to 80 millimeters. There we go. We now get the entire building in. We don't get too much else around it. So it's a photograph of the building itself. And if I go back up to 110, you can see there we go. And there's 80. So it's set the scene for that. And this is assuming that I want this particular viewpoint. Go back down to 55 millimeters. 55 millimeters, we're showing more of the foreground. We're showing more of the scene. Remember, I'm not moving between these uh, pictures. I'm just, I've got the camera on the tripod and I'm just swapping lenses over. So we're now at 55. Now, all of these pictures are using vertical shift. Vertical shift is there to keep the vertical lines in the scene truly vertical. So you can see the horizon is down here. So I've shifted the lens up a bit. For these adapted lenses, I'm using this Photodiox uh, tilt shift adapter. I've got an article, I've got videos about this. So if you're interested in using converted lenses like this, then uh, very useful for such stuff. So, so 55 millimeters, there we go. Let's go back down to the next one at 35 millimeters. And you now see it's a picture of the square here with details in it, and there's the building. Horizon's right low, so I've got quite a bit of vertical shift to keep everything true and vertical. So that's from 160 to 35 mil. Now, 
because the shift lenses, I could actually stitch. I can take multiple shots. So I can take one picture of a pit, the lens shifted down, another picture with the lens shifted upwards, do a flat stitch of them. And assuming the weather hasn't changed between shots and other things moved, then I can do a stitch. So that's the 35mm. But if I go back to the 160mm, which is uh, the original shot there, and then if I do an up-down stitch of 160 millimeters, same lens, I've now stitched, done an up-down stitch, and I've got a bit more coverage. I've got a different aspect ratio as well. So that varies as well. Now you could, if I didn't need high resolution, I could take one of these pictures with a much wider angle lens, 55 or the 35, and just crop to what I need. Uh, it all depends how much you need the detail and what, what you need to use the pictures for. Certainly showing on a screen like this, it doesn't make much difference. So that's 160. Now, 110 stitched. There we go. So I've got the entire building in with at 110. So it's an up-down stitch. It's given, I haven't put too much of the bottom half. I don't want too much foreground on it. I've just used it as a way of getting a bit more coverage and it gives a slightly different view. 80 mil stitch of that. Now I'm doing an up down stitch here because I have items, thin vertical lines in the scene and moving the lens up down doesn't produce as noticeable parallax problems as you get sometimes moving it left right. So these up down stitch, you can simply do your stitch, have the lens Shifted one way, shifted the other. I've got lots of stuff covering how to do this. This really is no more than just this. At some point, I should hope at least to one person, somebody who's watching this has gone, well, this is obvious. Um, I'm just changing the focal length. Yes, obvious to you maybe, but I found an awful lot of people never step back to think what difference different focal lengths make. So we've got that and I can move to a 55 mil stitch and there we go, we've got that view there. If I compare the 55mm stitch with the 35mm shifted lens, we've got a view like that. Well, that's fair enough. Let's move a bit closer and just look at some wider angles. I'm now walked forward a distance and I'm now looking, this is 55mm shifted up. Got the entire building here. Gives quite a pleasing look to it at this distance. Um, shows the main features of the building, shows the relative parts of it. Now that's at 55. We'll go down to 35 millimeters. And you can see it's on the river. Gives nice coverage, gives a fairly natural looking perspective of getting, I don't have to get too close to the building. Once again, every one of these shots has a degree of vertical shift to make sure the vertical's like that. If I just tip the camera up, we'd get the converging problem. That's why I use shift lenses. It's one of those things you just use a lot as an architectural photographer. So there we have 35 mil. Let's go to the Canon lenses now, the 24 mil, much wider. Now, this is particularly good quality lens, so I have no difficulties in this shot. I've now got quite a lot of context as well. And I can see some swans on the river. I've got really quite a wide coverage there. Now, I've also recently looked at uh, two lenses from Lauer, uh, a 20 millimeter and a 15 millimeter shift lenses. They are exactly the same as these, but obviously different, sh different focal length, so slightly different coverage. If I go to 17 millimeters, you get the really wide angle. And I've now got the steps. Uh, I've got the entire scene here. The building has been, has receded into a small part of the image and 17 needs using with some more care. Uh, I would say that for general shots, I much prefer the 24 or even the 35. Now, this is an adapted lens, so the quality is not quite as high, but it certainly gives a good look. So 35, 24, 17 is just a bit excessive. But when you need wide 17 or something like the lower 15, it really makes a difference. Okay, now all of these shots so far, I've set the camera up, 
changed the lens. I've not moved at all. What about if I move? And this is where you really do notice the difference because every one of these shots so far, I could have produced another one of the shots, as I've mentioned, by just cropping out part of the wide angle view. What I can't do is do the equivalent of moving. So we'll move round to look at the building from a slightly sideways angle. Now, this is at 55 millimeters. Now, I, I couldn't do um, 80 and above of this particular view because I couldn't get far enough away. And there's one of the reasons you might decide to use the wide angle lenses. But anyway, here we are. This is 55 millimeters looking towards it. We have some signs, we've got the walkway. We've got quite a nice balanced view of it, but I've had to get quite some distance away from it. As I couldn't even get far, far enough away to capture this equivalent view with the 80, yet alone any of the longer lengths, the focal lengths. So there we are at 50. Watch as I step through these, the relative proportions of bits of the building at different distances. So we've got this tower here in the background, we've got this section and we've got this bit that juts out. So I'm now a good few hundred, couple of hundred yards away from this building. This is 55 millimeter, shifted it up. I go to 35, I've moved closer to the building. I'm now standing on the lawn here. I'm trying to maintain this part of the building at about the same proportion in each shot. Now it changes the difference. So look at this building here compared to this one here. So go back, that's the 55, and there's the 35. The whole perspective is there. That's from 55 millimeter to 35 millimeters. Much more obvious as we next go to 24 millimeters, this building is now very prominent in it. Obviously this bit is as well, but this one here is receding into the In fact, it's hiding behind this building, even though it's much larger. You can see I'm still on the lawn. I'm just got a bit closer to the fence here. The fence and this walkway is now quite an interesting part of the composition. I go back. We've got more lawn in it here, but if I go to 24 millimeters, you can see once again, just getting closer. And it will come as no surprise when I go to 17 millimeters, the effect becomes even more noticeable. We've now got quite a pronounced look. Also, the clouds in the sky have a much more obvious feel of movement to them. So I'm, this is 17 mil. I'm just a few feet from this uh, fence here. I just drop back to 24, 17. You can see the change. This is just because I'm getting closer, but I'm using a wider focal, a uh, short focal length, wider lens to try and keep the relative proportions the same in each shot. So I just got that 24. Now, at this close, even slight movement will produce very noticeable difference. If I look, and this is the same building, if I go back to the 55 mil here, if I move here, it's not really going to make a great deal of difference to it. Um, it will change where this post is here with this sign and the sign here. So, you, you know, movement does have effect at these longer focal lengths, but it's not necessarily as obvious as when you're doing it at 17 mil. Now that's 17 mil. If I move very slightly, we get that. Now you may not see much there. I'll just go back to the other one. And this is moving a relatively short distance. And you see I'm changing distinctly the whole look of it. And this is why we you using a wide angle lens for landscape work or bar architecture like this, needs a lot of care in where you take your photograph from because it has such an effect on different elements of the picture. So slight movement there, I've changed the relative balance of the picture quite a bit by a small movement, both at 17 millimeters there. What I would show is a stitched version using the 17. And this gives you an idea of just what a massive field of view you get with a 17 millimeter lens when you do an up down shift like that. Um, it really is quite a lot. And of course I could just crop a bit out whatever I want on that. But unlike the other shots 
where I was in one location and I could duplicate the others by just cropping. These shots are given by me physically moving. So we go back 55, 35, 24, 17. So not only do the focal lengths give you different coverage, they effectively allow you when taking the same subject to stand at different distances. Now, this is using shift lenses. All of this is exactly relevant if you use ordinary lenses as well, or these lenses with no shift on them. Um, it's just one of those little things that I've found an awful lot of photographers never really stop to appreciate the difference between zooming and moving. Um, so anyway, I hope this has been of some interest and that these little videos do help. Um, I find them interesting myself, uh, you know, just to get out and remind myself what lenses I've got and what lenses I can use. Um, all of these lenses are lenses that I will happily use on a job to get the look I want. Um, that's, I have to do that because actually getting the clients to say in advance what they want is not terribly easy sometimes, but yeah, whatever. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm going to have lots more varied stuff, as I say, printing, other stuff about photography as well. So if you've got any questions, let me know, because quite often it's people's questions that lead me to get ideas for doing these short videos. So thanks again. Bye.